again, we want to welcome you, and if, uh, if you know where you are in direction, behind me is towards the state of Oklahoma. Father, we just pray for Oklahoma. <laughs> now, uh, no, 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 where, where, where are my Oklahoma people at? Where are the Sooners? Boomers? Okay. Some of you are like, what, what happened in Oklahoma? Like, did a tornado hit? Yeah, no, but it wasn't in Oklahoma. It was in Dallas yesterday. And uh, just praying, just thinking about y'all. And uh, asking God to be merciful and gracious as he was with LSU last night. We uh, went to bed late. And uh, so maybe if the message is not on point, you know why uh, God led me to uh, pray and to give all of my best energy to the game in Jesus' name. But we want to welcome those that are watching from one of our campuses, maybe one of the 13 correctional campuses. It's an honor to be with you. Online, four-day weekend, ACL. Some of y'all are out of the racetrack watching church right now. God bless you. Just be clean in Jesus' name. But can we put our hands together and say hello to everybody? God bless you guys. And uh, we are excited about all things happening here at Celebration Church. And when you walked in, you noticed you probably received our legacy brochure and handout. We do this every year. And really what we have as a, in fact, my job title is not just pastor and shepherd, but also to, as a church, we create places and spaces like worship, for instance. So that you can connect, and, and we have in this legacy brochure, it's lanes or initiatives, so that you will see where are we going as a church and how can I get involved? How can I make a difference? And that's really why we are on this planet, and that is to, to make a difference. And so for the next four weeks, we're going to be talking by faith. We're going to be talking about those that walked with God by faith and how they left a legacy. And the reality is we're all leaving a legacy. We're all leaving behind. The question is, what kind of legacy will you leave behind? You have a choice. You have a decision to make. You have, you have an option. How many have ever been to Cracker Barrel and families leave a legacy behind with their f- children? Like Lori and I were flying back from New Orleans and um, the f- previous flight left a legacy of Tito bo- bottles and all sorts of activity. How many know when you're in New Orleans, you're just going to have all sorts of activity on that airplane or going to New Orleans? And, and people leave behind them. They're going to leave behind a life-giving legacy or maybe a life-sucking legacy. God has given us that opportunity. And we're going to be talking about that. Then it leads to November the 3rd, the opportunity to bring your legacy offering as you see where we're going as a church and it just simply is an opportunity for us to partner with God. We never say what to give. That's, that's between you and God. We unapologetically know that God does bless. God does give to us the grace of giving. But we also know that in our sacrifice of giving, God opens the windows of heaven. And you just know that God does do what he says in his word. In fact, he says, I will not be mocked when it comes to the law of sowing and reaping. I will not be mocked. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, he what? He, he reaps. And so we're going to be talking about all of these things. It's going to be exciting. And then as you leave and exit today, you'll have an opportunity to take one of these rocks that have been provided. And we're going to be talking about what kind of legacy do you want to leave today? For some, someone was telling me today, leadership is what they want to leave behind. Or maybe you want to leave a legacy to, to a granddaughter. Lori says she's going to write on on her rock, she's going to write, May Claire. How many know when that grandbaby comes, everything goes to the grandbaby? <laughs> all of it. All the money, all the love, all the attention. I feel lonely up here by myself. <laughs> but I sure do like May Claire as well. But you'll have an opportunity to write what kind of legacy, what are you believing God for as you exit today? And you can place that at one of the altars that we have provided. It's just, in fact, the book of Joshua talks about these stones, stones of remembrances. Like, God, this is what I want to do with my life. I don't want my life. In fact, when the Bible tells us on the first day the church began, Peter stands up along with the other apostles and he preaches. And he gives his thought. He goes, be saved from this perverse generation. Come out from this perverse, perverted, but it also means twisted, but you could say it like this. It's twisted and perverse because it's self-seeking. 
See, the world says it's about yourself. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Self-care, self-treatment. So I'm, I'm for it. I think Jesus did say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But we do live in a world that makes life and makes the world all about themselves. And when you live a life for yourself, you don't leave a legacy. In fact, you don't leave a healthy legacy. You don't live a life that is worthy of others wanting to follow, wanting to be like you. And so when he says, come out of this generation, come out of this mindset, come out of just living for today. See, legacy doesn't live for today, it lives for the future. We're going to be talking about Noah today, but I was thinking this morning, I want to just add another layer to this, to this dough bash cake, to this cake. The Bible says in the book of Judges chapter 13, you know the story of Samson. Samson was, of course, a prophet. He was called of God, chosen of God. But Revelation 17, 14 says, those who walk with the Lamb, those who walk with the Lamb are, they're called, they're chosen, and they're faithful. Samson was absolutely called. He was absolutely chosen, but he was not faithful. Because the Bible tells us in Judges chapter 13, verse 5, he told the parents, in fact, he says, you're going to have a child, I don't want you to take him to the barber for a while. In other words, no razor shall come upon his head. He was not supposed to drink strong drink, and he's supposed to live a life separated for God. This boy is going to be a Nazareth, but watch this, as he would be a Nazarite, God says this about Samson. It's, it's interesting. He says this at the beginning of his life. He's going, he's going to begin. He won't finish. He's going to begin to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. It's actually very sobering that God says he won't finish the task of leaving a legacy. How many know there are people that really start well? They begin well, but they don't finish well. Legacy leaves behind not just a beginning, but an end, so that other people can begin to connect. Now, we know Samson was mentioned in the book of Hebrews. His name is mentioned that he had faith. There's no question about that. But when you think about Samson, who else do you think about? Delilah. And I'm not talking about the radio program. That when you think about Samson, you think about the legacy, not where he would destroy the Philistines as he was called to, but the Philistines would mock him. In fact, instead of expelling the Philistines, the Philistines used him as entertainment. How many know the world is looking to make fun of Christians? The world is making fun. In fact, the world loves to make fun of people of faith. And I'm going to talk about a man today in the form of Noah, because when you think about Noah, what do you think about? What comes up? Somebody said a zookeeper, <laughs> a mobile zookeeper. No, we know that he had a legacy and his legacy, he left behind, of course, an ark, a boat by, by God, by God's command, God's leading. He built that ark. And arguably, I believe that Noah is probably one of the greatest builders of legacy. Legacy is simply the lasting impact that you make on other people. In other words, by your life, what impact do you leave behind? It's a lasting consequence. It's a lasting, everlasting effect, a result. Legacy is what is passed down to the next generation. It's, it's what you impress upon other people. It's what you pass off. In other words, you can pass off finances or property. How many did not get that legacy from your mom and your dad? You didn't get the financial prosperity. My mom, she inherited property, inherited a couple thousand acres actually in Mississippi back when her, when her mother died back in the early 60s. But but she had to borrow money to pay the taxes on the property. How many know there's some property you don't want? And they're like, I'm giving this to you. And you're like, I don't want it. Take it away. But of course, I and you would love a financial 
inheritance, a legacy, but listen, not all property and all finances is a healthy inheritance or a legacy, but it can be, it can be property, it can be possessions, but it also is values, it's ethics, it's example, it's love, it's sacrifice. I mean, when you think about the people in your life, think about someone prominent, someone that made a difference, a difference maker in your life, what do you think about? When you think about your grandmother, when you think about a grandfather, when you think about a mom, a dad, what was their legacy? See, it still lives, it still continues. That's what legacy is. A couple of years ago, Noah, Noah was sent to the United States. And the Lord told Noah, he says, Noah, I'm, I'm kind of up to here with the world. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you build another ark. I'm gonna, have you, uh, I'm gonna have you start all over again and I'm gonna wash this world clean. So build another ark and I want you to take every two of every animal and take some human beings with you and here's the blueprints. And, but here's the difference. As I'm gonna send rain in, for 40 days and 40 nights but you got six months this time to get the job done. So God comes down to visit Noah, and there is Noah sitting on the front yard, his front yard, just crying, just sad, weeping. And the Lord says, what's wrong? What's wrong, Noah? And he goes, I don't have an ark finished for you, God. As you see, I didn't get the job done. Forgive me, begged Noah. But things are different here now. He says, I had to have a building permit, which I could not get. I was assigned an inspector, and they wanted me to install sprinkler systems and the zoning law in the neighborhood claims that the ark exceeds the height limit and I was required to go to the development board and to appeal the decision and then the department of transportation demanded a bond from me to to move the power lines and all of the overhead obstructions I told them that the sea is coming to us but they wouldn't listen and then of course I also had to to meet the board that would not allow me to cut down the trees because they said they wanted to save the spotted owls. And and I told them, I'm going to save all the owls. But they said, no. He's just crying. And and then I was sued by an animal rights group because they thought I was being cruel to the animals for the closed, confined spaces that we were going to put the animals in. And then I had to do an environmental impact study on the proposed flood that was coming. And then I had to meet with the other government agencies concerning the workers if they were all credentialed. And, and then, God, it's going to take 10 more years to get this job done. And then finally, all of a sudden, suddenly the sky opens and the sun begins to shine. The rainbow appears. And Noah says, Lord, does this mean that you're not going to destroy the world? God says, no, the government beat me to it. <laughs> How many know you better vote? That's, you, you better vote. You better vote. Turn to somebody and say, you better vote. You better vote. Yeah. And the kind of government you get is what you voted for. So there's my political statement for the day. We have enough conflict. You need the word. But who and what legacy will you leave? It is living for more than oneself. It lives for others. It lives to make a difference in family. Legacy lives for eternity. That's what legacy is. It's a life that goes beyond your life to the next generation and to the next generation. When we moved here 23 years ago, we started building the ark in the Round Rock Library. We started building this ark Celebration Church, and, and it was a slow ark. It was a slow boat. And many of you drove by us. You went, no, not this boat, not this ark. But we kept building. You see, we kept building because we knew that there would come one day. There would come a need in the city. And that's what exactly happened to Noah. He just kept building for 120 years, even though they never saw rain. In fact, when he said it's going to rain in 40 days, and it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, and there's going to come judgment, God was giving Noah 
what every legacy builder needs to know that legacy lives, yes, it lives for others, but let me tell you what it does. It preserves the life of others. It, it stretches your life. In other words, it makes you better than you really are. Can I just tell you? It makes you stronger than you really are. And it gives you something to dream about. It gives you something to hope for. It gives you something to, to wake up in the morning with. God, I want to make the difference in the lives of not just me, but in the next generation. And what Noah did was he was stretching not just his own personal life, but he was, he was preserving the life of his, of his family. Making for life, creating life. Hebrews chapter 11, watch this, it says in the New Testament about Noah, Noah was warned by God. God gave a warning to him about the things that had never happened. The rain had never come. Had never seen a drop of rain on the planet at that time. Because God was watering it from an underground sprinkler system. A mist. Barton Creek was watering the world at that time. And no one had ever seen anything like this. And so he begins to build a boat. And you know people begin to laugh at him. What are you doing? And he said, well, God's going to cause it to rain. And this rain is going to flood the earth. And, and you better be on the boat. And the Bible says he, though, did not know, nor did anyone know yet what had been prophesied or even spoken to by God in reverence or in fear or in respect, he did what God told him to do. He prepared. He prepared. Let me just tell you about legacy. It's not an accident. You don't accidentally leave a good life. You don't accidentally live a good life. You prepare to live a life. You prepare to leave. You prepare. Prepare. Where do you think Noah got the lumber from? Was Home Depot available? Was Amazon around? Was Bezos building any arcs at that time? Of course not. There was no Bezos. There was no Home Depot, Walmart. There was, there was not 84 lumber. He had to prepare the lumber himself. He had to go and he had to take a tree and he had to look at that tree and go, I think I can make something out of that tree. I can take lumber out of that tree. Let me ask you a question. How do you look at the things that are in front of you? See, he saw a boat. Can I just tell you, you show me how you think, I'll show you where you're going. I, 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 you are going to receive the attitude of your life. You're going to receive it. You're going to get it. It's on you. It's not anyone else. It's not on anyone else. It's on you. You have what you think. So when he looks at a tree, they're like, what are you doing with that tree? Why are you making lumber? And then, of course, we knew he, he had to have the, the thing to adhere or to cause things to stick together. He had to form the nail. Where did he get the nails? There wasn't a nail company. There wasn't an Acme nail industry at that time. Where are the Roadrunner people at? Where am I? How many were? When I just said Acme, you went to the Roadrunner. That's where my brain goes. People talk about the violence in today's world. Listen, just watch one show of Roadrunner. It goes really dark. And it was awesome. It was just wonderful. And then they would get up and do it all over again. They'd check out and go back home. All that to say, he looked at that forest and he saw a boat. How you look at this world will determine, do you see a boat? Or do you see bitterness? Do you see impossibility or do you see what's possible? And so the Bible tells us that he prepared. In other words, his preparation probably had much to do with, yes, his faith, but it also had to do with his attitude. How many of you have to prepare to get out of bed every morning when you go to work? It's, I'm not going to see trees. I'm not going to see lumber. or I'm not going to see the negative. I'm going to see what I can build. I'm going to leave a legacy. And he prepared an ark for the salvation, watch this, the salvation of who? His house. It's interesting. It doesn't say for the world, though he would affect the world. But he knew that he had to start at home. The question is, do those who know you the best like you the most? 
That should be your goal. Do you know that should be your goal? That should be a vision of yours. Those who know me the best should love me the most. But isn't it very often that those who know us the best don't like us because they know us? And what we've got to make sure is that we are living a life in such a way that when we do build a legacy, our family wants to follow. They will get in the boat that we built. They will get into the lane, the initiative, because it has been built by preparation. It's been built by righteousness. It's been built by faith. It's been built with integrity, with character. And so he prepared an ark, looking at that scripture, for the visitation. Not just the salvation, the visitation of God for his house. Because he knew, he knew the world was about to be judged. He, by faith, received that word, though he did not understand it all. He just knew that there was life after death. We were in a cab, Lori and I, this past week. We, I went to speak at a conference in New Orleans. And so we were coming out of the city. We are moving from the hotel downtown to the hotel out by the church where I was speaking for this conference. And as we were driving, listening to our taxi cab driver, super nice man from Bosnia, 23 years ago had moved from the war of Bosnia and moved his family to New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm like, really? <laughs> Bosnia might have been safer, but... He goes, oh, believe me, <laughs> everything that we experienced in Bosnia, we were prepared for. But the reality is, as he began to share with me about his Bosnian background, I said, tell me about your faith. And he goes, well, I don't have a faith. We won't have a faith. I've never had a faith. He goes, I just live in my mind. What I live, I live by my mind. And he goes, just like New Orleans. He goes, I don't see anybody going to church here. I don't see where anyone is living any kind of faith. They, they don't have any kind of connection to, to something outside of their own mind. And then he said these words that are haunting me. He says, because no one has come back from the dead to tell me what life is after death. How many know that was a T? He just preached the gospel. There has been one back from the dead. And he does tell you there's life after death. There's life. There's an ark. There's salvation. There's safety. Because after death, there is judgment. There is condemnation to those who are born again. To those who, like Noah, hear the warning of God, you can try to save yourself in your own mind, in your own power, but it's going to fail. Because there's only one salvation, there's only one way to being saved, there's only one way to escape the judgment the Bible tells us, and that is through Christ. He's the ark. He's the boat. He prepared his life. In fact, he lived his life to prepare us for eternity. And you have to be born again, which means you have to come to Christ. You have to, the first birth, you're born into this world. But the second birth, you're born into Christ. You're born into the kingdom. And if you say, Pastor Joe, I don't know if I'm born again. Well, that means you're not born again. I don't know if I'm born again. Those who don't know they're born again are not born again. Because you know you're born the first time. Come on, pinch the person next to you. I, come on, tell them. I know you're here. I feel you. Yeah. The reality is, Stop. Some of y'all are pinching too much over there. Just... <laughs> the reality is, is that God came down to save us, to visit us. And whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but have eternal life. Because one came back from the dead. And he says, I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Now, you can try your key. You can try your power. You can try your way. But there is no other way but through me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. And I've proven by my being raised from the dead. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's what Peter was saying. Be saved from this perverse generation that thinks it can save itself. 
thinks it can heal itself. It can deliver itself. Where does any invention go that man creates? Where does anything go that man puts his hand to? Where does it end up going? It goes dark. It never goes towards life. It goes towards death. We can take technology, and instead of technology bringing forth life, which it can, we also know that same technology brings forth death. And it doesn't take long. For man to put his hands to something and everything that we know in this world dies. From the day you enter into this world, you started dying. You're dying. (laughs) Thank you for this wonderful Sunday morning expression. You started off with joy. Now you're telling me, die. No, I'm not saying die. I'm saying you're going to die. It's going to rain. Yeah, but I've never seen it. This is what they said to Noah. And he goes, trust me. By faith, Noah prepared. And he said, watch this, by the preparing of an ark for his home, he condemned the world. In other words, he was saying, if you're not on this boat, you're condemning yourself. You're judging yourself. Because there's going to come a day, you are going to face the judge. Without his mercy, without his grace, without that which is going to provide for you eternity in heaven, you're going to be judged, you're going to be condemned. But he came to give us grace. And the Bible says as a result of him doing what he did, leaving this legacy, it says he became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to what? Faith. How many are thankful? You're not an heir. You're not an inheritor. You don't leave a legacy based on your works. It's by faith. It's faith. That's it. I believe in Christ. I believe he's my ark. I believe he's my boat. I believe that he came to rescue me because the Bible tells us the Lord saw in Genesis 6, a little rehearsal. It says that the Lord saw the wickedness that man was great into wickedness. He saw that man was just constantly in his every thought intentional to go towards darkness. It was on evil continually. The Lord was sorry that he had made man. The Lord said, I'm going to blot out man. I'm done. I'm I'm finished. And I'm going to start all over again. But verse 8 tells us, but Noah found favor. He found, how many want to find the favor of God? How many have, um, let's bring it to this analogy. How many know people who, if there's a multiple set of lines, lines into a bank, or which we used to have banks. Do you know what banks used to be like back in the day? Doesn't work. But let's just say we're going to Disney or we're going to some location and there are multiple lines. How many, there are some people that every line they get, they find favor. It's like, and then I, how many have the gift of finding the wrong line? <laughs> like you come to H-E-B, you're like, God, lead me, lead me, lead me. Please tell me how to get out of this prison. And you're looking at the basket in front of you. You're like, this is a good line. Only to find out he doesn't have his card. <laughs> or he's accusing H-E-B of, of having a bad system because he knows he has enough money on that debit card. Next thing you know, you're stuck. And every line is full. Lori and I are coming out of the airport garage last night at 7 o'clock. God's football team is playing football. <laughs> I'm pretty good at being ready to come through. How many have ever parked at the airport and you come out of the close confined area and you know how to get in and you know how to get out? And I said, Lori, I'm just, let's let's get home to catch the game. And boy, as I come out, I take that ticket, I stick it, and Lori hands me her card. This is gonna be awesome. And it says, card in progress. Progress. There was no progress. She goes, oh yeah, I forgot. It didn't work the last time I tried it. 
And then it has to read, and it, it takes about 30 minutes to spit the card back out and the ticket. The airport is closed. We've missed, we've missed the game. We were there till one in the morning waiting on, it wasn't that bad, but that's how I felt. <laughs> I didn't find favor. I didn't find the favor. <laughs> well, Noah did. When it says he found grace, he found favor. Let me tell you why he found favor. He found the word. And he found the word. And he believed the word. Get ready. Let me ask you a question. Are you ready? Are you ready to die? It's not going to happen right now. It's not. <laughs> They're dropping like flies in the back. I don't know if they could hear that in the back, but somebody just died back here. I was on a plane one time and I said to the lady flying next to me, I said, you know, the Lord told me this is my last day on the planet. I'm a pastor and God said, get ready. I'm going to heaven today. And uh, it was a wonderful flight. And we arrived and she said, you're a liar, just like all preachers. I said, one day. And the Bible says he moved with godly fear. He moved with reverence. And he prepared, he prepared a legacy. He prepared a legacy not just for his life, but for the life of his sons. Eight total. His home. To which the Bible says he condemned the world. There was a special or there was a favor. There was a grace on the family of Noah because he built a legacy. Let me ask you a question. Are you moving towards God? Are you moving towards God's will? Are you moving towards the heart of God, the mind of God? Because the Bible says no one was moving towards God. No one cared about what God thought. It says that their thoughts were continually evil. No one cared about God. No one hungered for God. No one feared God. No one but Noah had a God thought. If I can get anything out of you today, maybe you walked in here cold and you have not had a God thought you were just brought to church today or you're watching online. I pray that you would just, if nothing else, I get you to think about God. Because the Bible tells us they didn't have a spiritual thought, they didn't have a faith thought. It was a faithless, godless, spiritless world, but by faith. Noah simply said, God, I want to be where you want me to be. And I want to build a legacy, not just for me, but for my family. Though I don't understand this idea, this concept of rain, there's no precedence, there's no example, there's no evidence, there's no proof. And you may sit here today and say, there's no proof to this God thing. There's no proof to this Christ. There's no proof. Prove it to me. The Bible is not a book that is here to prove you or to give proof. It's not the position, the first words, in the beginning. What's the first words of the Bible? In the beginning what? God. In the beginning, God. Now, your beginning comes by faith. Trust in God. And I think for you to live, and for you to live far away from God, or for you to live that there is no God, I think that just takes more faith. It just takes more belief, in my opinion, to say that there is no God. The reality is, is that by faith he trusted, he obeyed, and he left a legacy for his family, but for us, the family of God. When we moved here, as I said, 23 years ago, we started building ark, and many of you wouldn't get in the ark. I didn't want to get in the ark either. And I'm sure Noah had to say to himself, I don't know how this is going to make it. 23 years later, guess what? People now get in the ark. 120 years, Noah built that boat without a sign, without a text, an email, a post, a tweet, without any proof that rain was going to come. He just trusted God, and he never took his eye off the vision, the goal, the prize. He never took his eyes, watch this, 
off of his sons. Off of the next generation. Off of his children. Off of his home. And I want to say, what does a builder of legacy look like? Because the truth is, you're building a legacy. And the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. So if you think this is disattached, if you think that this story of Noah is irrelevant, let me tell you what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 24. As it was in the days of Noah, it's going to happen again. For the coming of the Son of Man is going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. How many know humanity has a problem? We go back to our stupidity. Has anybody ever gone back to things that you once were delivered from? Do I have any truth to that? Or am I up here by myself just feeling delusional right now? Why? We know what happened the last time. And the Bible says in the last days, and Jesus said it, it's going to happen again. Now watch this. The first time was with a flood. And he said, I promise you, I'm not going to flood the earth again with water. But Peter does say this. He's going to flood it with fire. It's not going to be with water. It will be with fire. And the Bible says when he comes, he comes with fire. Now, people ask me prophetically, what do I believe if that means? I, I'm not quite sure could it be some kind of device, some kind of something that man can manufacture that can end this world with multiple devices within a matter of seconds? As we know, there's some really wonderful, encouraging books out there about nuclear war and how that might end, how that could end. I mean, could that be the fire? Like, I don't know. I just know this. That as it was in the days of the coming of, the, of Noah, so it will be in the days of Jesus. The world will be back to its old ways. Now watch this. But here's the positive. See, don't look at it as a negative. Look at it as a positive. And just as there was a legacy builder in the days of Noah, you can be a legacy builder in the days of Christ. And I am all about having fun. I'm all about games. I'm all about sports. We're all about stadiums. We're all about season tickets. We're all about the various things that all of us enjoy. There's nothing wrong with that if that is what you decide. But let me just say, you better be building a legacy of faith. Pastor Joe, I'd love my sons to turn out. Your boys, three boys, three wonderful wives, not an ounce of problems. All loving God, all in the house of God. Serving their purpose. How many believe Lori has probably more to do with that than I do? How many would agree? That's a fact. But guys, we built a legacy of faith. An ark is what we live for. The house of God. And when you and I begin to realize what is important, and of course that can be in the form of leadership, that can be in the form of ethics and values, and discipline and character. All of that is included. But the Bible says God delivered Noah and his family from judgment because, and that's a Tito bottle that just spilled right there, that's because he was a builder of legacy. I'll just leave you with this because legacy thinks next generation. Legacy, number one, legacy builders look to the future. Please do not get so engrossed into what is happening today and what is happening in this moment that you forget the moments to come. Build for the future. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes and also in Lamentations, it talks about people who do not consider the future. Consider the future. There is an eternity. Number two, legacy builders look to the Lord. I don't know how. I don't know what to do. I've never built a boat, said Noah. But God gave him exactly everything that he needed to know how to build a boat. Can I just tell you, God will tell you how to build a legacy. God will tell you. God is faithful. He goes, I'm not going to leave you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And to the end of time, but to the end of the ages, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll send you the Holy Spirit. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will bring back to your remembrance things that I told you that you forgot in high school. Number three, legacy builders look to others what does that mean? It, it means that they look 
to others, not necessarily in the form of help and, and advice and counsel. That's true. Multiple counselors are wise. But it means that you are living your life with others in mind. You're living your life as an example, a pattern. And ultimately, you have to start first at home. You have to start first with those that you literally go home with today. Those that you will spend the day with. Those that spend the night at your house. Some of those who will never leave you. You wish it was time. But you want to live a life that thinks about other people. It just simply means adding value to people. If you will live this simple law of life, I want to value people. I want to believe in people, and I want to unconditionally love people. How many know you're going to be a difference maker? And you can't do that without God, and you can't do that without, of course, God's Word. And the ultimate is that you can't live forever without Christ. And then lastly, legacy builders look to the reward. Now, we don't do things and we don't give because of rewards. I I, I like the story of a friend of mine was telling, he said he... He got one of those letters from a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist that said, if you sow in the next 30 days a $1,000 seed to our ministry, you're going to receive in 30 days a $10,000 blessing. How many, have ever, how many have ever heard that kind of? Who's never heard that? Because if you haven't, I'm going to take advantage of you right now. <laughs> and uh, give a 1000 in 30 days, you're going to have a $10,000 blessing, a $10,000 reward for your obedience. My friend said, you know what I did? He said, I wrote him back. That's so selfish of me. So arrogant. I don't want the, I want you to have the 10,000. He says, you send me the thousand dollars and you can keep the 10,000. How many know you need to send some of those letters back and let them have? Guys, whatever you do, Colossians 3 says, do it with all your heart. As for the Lord, it's not about for people, though it is for people. But you're doing it as unto the Lord, knowing that from the Lord you will receive what? The reward of the inheritance, the legacy. It is Christ whom you serve. So what are you leaving behind? My question to you is, what are you leaving behind? Who is being impacted by your life. That's why in that brochure, we're talking about leaving behind a legacy in the Austin Metroplex with campuses, churches, Austin Christian University, next generation with our WAVE student conferences and all of our outreach to the next generation, missions. We're, we're involved in everything that is happening right now in North Carolina and in Florida with teams providing trucks, providing food. Derek Zorneman, who's been an elder of our church, literally is the connecting point to all of the ministries, Samaritan's Purse, Convoy of Hope. God literally has given Derek the thing that everybody uses to reach people that are in pain right now. How many are thankful that came out of Celebration Church? Derek, I taught him everything he knows. And then, of course, Italy, Mozambique. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to start with this. Please, no one moving around. But if you were to say today, Pastor Joe, if I died, if I died today, I am not prepared. I have not prepared my ark. I have not prepared my life for eternally. I'm not, I'm not born again. I know I'm not born again. If you're not born again, I want to give you an opportunity to be born again. It's a simple prayer. We're not going to embarrass you. This is not a religious activity. This is how you connect to Christ. He loves you. He brought you here today to tell you that he has provided for you through his name, through his power, through his blood, through his cross, the gift of eternal life. And if you want him to be the Lord of your life, you can pray this prayer with me. How many, how many would say, Joe, I'm going to pray this prayer. Would you just slip up your hand and say, I want to pray that prayer. I want to be saved today. I do not want to leave this place wondering if I'm born again. I, 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 I'm just telling you, don't leave. Some of, you, some of you, you love God, but you know what? You've stopped. The 120 years have worn you out. And you're ready. You, you want to pick back up. You want to pick up 
where you left off. God, I want to build the legacy. I want to get back to where I know I was once spiritually. How many of you would say, that's me. That's where I am today. Yeah, I need, I need to start all over again. Yeah. And then thirdly, how many of you want to leave a lasting legacy to the next generation? How many want to live your life that outlives you? Let me see. How, how many? Yeah, I think all of us, of course. Can we stand to our feet? I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. No one moving. This, is, this, this right now is the most important part of the service. The landing. Can we say this out loud? Lord Jesus, as I open up my mouth and believe in my heart that you are Lord and you are Savior, I believe right now my name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Forgive me of my sins. I know you came to this world to save me, to deliver me, to free me from judgment, from condemnation, from guilt, from my sins, and to release me into a life of joy, a life of mercy, a life that is fulfilling. You are the purpose, Lord, to creation. And you are now my purpose to why I'm created. Lead me, guide me, and may my life make a difference in this world. And all of God's people said, can we just thank God for the decisions that were made today?